started discussions about it, is on the ways we work in being active or passive in collecting, uh, the methodologies that we use, are there committees and what kind of authority lies with those committees. Uh, those are some of the things that came to, uh, were mentioned. The ways we cope with the logistics, the infrastructure, the lack of budgets, the mergers taking place, uh, and which are actually on the one hand being very limiting, on the other hand it also they at times invite us to start rethinking, reframing uh, the ways we work, what should we collect? Well, what uh, Stockholm was also in the same that uh, that I guess the museum also had to think of. Okay, we've come out of certain histories. We all have our local histories. We all have our histories of the museum, which are actually both in the collections, but also in the histories of. Uh, politics which have to do with why we are being merged and why we are uh, being uh, brought from Paris to uh, Marseille and then have to reinvent our position in the city that we're located in. Uh, other uh, topics of ethics and also the ways that we conceive our futures, I guess, and what is it that we want to have in our collections represented of these times? How should they be represented and are we allowed to represent them in our collections if other museums are delegated that presence of being able to work with migrants and being able to work with communities that are living around your museum. So those kind of aspects I think are really important for us to keep on reflecting on. We sat together with all the curators for three days and had a meeting where we were actually discussing how, what, what should ethnographic museums acquire, what have we been acquiring, and we came to a certain amount of statements. Uh, on why we collect and what are the principles for active and passive collecting. Passive collecting meaning what, when donations come in, uh, what is it that we collect? And also about deacquisitioning. So if we're deacquisitioning, what would that mean to us and how could it be done? Of course, the um, policy we started, well, not we, but we were told to uh, submit and to discuss this to the chief curator that failed because everybody thought it is more important to, to decide by department. And the other thing and the tendency in uh, our museum is that when I started 20 years ago, I had about approximately 10,000 euro per year as at last year I had 100 euro. The Slovene Ethnographic Museum is the state ethnological museum and uh, is a museum about people for people, a museum of cultural identities, a link between the past and the present, between traditional and modern culture, between our own and other cultures. The strategy of a museum like our museum, which is a museum of society, is a campaign collection. Why? Because uh, uh, the, the strategy is first to choose a topic, then to elaborate a scientific project, then organize field works in the place where we want to, to study the things, and then at the end, collecting things. Collecting things, things representing the, the social fact we want to, to in, integrate in our um, collection. I want to say something about George Henri Rivière because I forget uh, yesterday. Uh, he is also s some a person uh, who organized something very interesting for us for co-collecting, I think. But in the 70s, he, he elaborates the concept of eco museum, and I think eco museum is something. It's a tool. It's a very interesting tool to organize co-collecting, auto-conservation uh, auto and self-conservation for a different community. At present, uh, Pigorini Museum has not clear collection policies and practices. The other major kind of area of collecting is in, actually in relation to the work of the university. So we have a small endowment um, called the Crowther Bainan Fund, and through that the museum has been funding mainly kind of doctoral field workers, sometimes master's field workers, who are doing research in different areas of the world um, to make small collections that are informed by and come out of their kind of research processes. Almost every decision we take is an ad hoc one because it's very difficult to uh, do general rules. But we did uh, 
We do have uh, collection management policies, I think. The problem is we're not an ethnographical museum. We're really a museum about Africa. So we have a very large variety of, uh, of collections. We have 10 million biological specimens. We have uh, 150,000 ethnographical objects. We've got uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, historical maps, uh, geological collections, music instruments, rocks, um, uh, wood species, tropical wood species. So, you can't really have one collection policies. They're all sort of specific to the different types. Problem for us is now we should uh, have more contemporary art. But uh, how do you select them? What do you take? You know, uh, obviously we have some contemporary art that we acquire specifically for uh, for temporary exhibitions. But we have a big debate: what should we do? What should we not do? What is our role vis-a-vis -vis, uh, 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 contemporary art museums? If you read between the lines, the guidelines just kind of make it safe acquisitions in the sense that um, we should be active in the acquisitions and uh, stress restraint. We have four museums with different philosophies uh, and very different his histories with the collections. The collections are all now one collection and we're kind of asked to divorce ourselves from the histories of the collections. But that's very difficult to do because we are working with the collections that actually reflect the history of the institution. So it's, it's a bit um, difficult to know, I mean, how we should proceed. Because then, if we're the museums of world culture, we present world culture, we have you know, certain aspects that are art historical, certain aspects that are uh, ethno ethnological, certain aspects that are archaeological. How do you have one overarching uh, collections policy? So Lotus and I started thinking, well, maybe the way to go is actually to, to, to collect by themes, have an active collections policy by theme. One thing, of course, we get donations. Uh, donations are sometimes very difficult to deal with because sometimes they are souvenirs, travel souvenirs brought by, by Germans that do not really fit well in the collections. Otherwise, uh, at other times, they can also be problematic from an ethical point of view, like that couple who recently came to me offering me a Buddha head, Angkor period, Khmer, uh, which they had acquired in Thailand in the 1980s in a refugee camp on the Cambodian border. But we always already work with co-curators, co-collectors, artists, and partner institutions. Sometimes, however, it is, can be difficult to get, the, get funding for this other part, for these collaborators. We are quite lucky in German, uh, for, uh, compared to other German museums that we still get, can get access to considerable funding for that purpose. But the funding is not a budget that we get every year, but it's a central budget for all museums of the federal state of Baden-Württemberg. So the most other museums having access to that budget would be art museums, art galleries, and there's a central commission where we would have all to, acquire, uh, to, to present all our suggestions for, for the suggestions for acquisitions, and they would have to be judged by the directors of the other museums, and most of them are art historians, so uh, it is, can be very difficult to, to get an acquisition through that is, can, is not fit, does not fit the European categories of art. And we only acquire objects that are unproblematic from an ethical point of view and conform to the stipulations of UNESCO conventions and the ICOM guidelines. I wonder when we see the examples from the co-collecting where people bringing objects to the museum we never thought about could be in our museum mm. that co-collecting can be a chance to challenge our categories we are working with. Yeah? Mm. And so maybe this co-collecting can start a transformation from the fundament of the museum, from the collection or in the case of Vienna really from the basement. And uh, this is maybe, the, the, for me, one of the um, big plus of uh, co-collecting. 
perhaps what these bringing ins do when you bring in collection is that they actually are the, that bringing in as minor histories destabilize the major histories. It is there to try and trouble what we've come to know over time, what we've come to know as a particular kind of collecting vein. It is a political act to think about what does it mean to collaborate and co-collect. If you read against the grain of the catalogue, we can start to see Pacific or Indigenous peoples that we work with as active agents in their relationships with the museums. I think co-collecting might just have to be a targeted strategy amongst all the other curatorial strategies we have at our disposal mm. and one that we deploy according to the circumstances, mm -hmm. the history of relationships and the problems that, that come up before us as curators and institutions. So if somebody gives something to you, you give something back. For many, many years we've been receiving these gifts, whether these gifts were given in a good way or whether they were taken, we're still receiving them. So in order for us as museum people to continue this relationship, we need to figure out what are we going to give back? What are we going to give back to the communities where these things mm. came from? When you think about co-collecting, it's this idea that in fact people are being engaged from many different perspectives with the same objects and it's the relevance of the object ultimately that creates the, the future co-collecting experiences. But collecting isn't the thing, it's the, it's the relationship that is formed both by bringing things in and by exhibiting them.